So time is big. Oh, no, wait a minute. That was the very first Ignite Phoenix presentation. Sorry. Um, that's when I talked to you about deep time, and I showed you just how big is big when we look at time on a geological scale. But time's not only big. Time's also weird, strange. You know, not an advanced theoretical physics sort of way. I mean, that's cool, but none of you brought your textbook, so we'll skip that conversation. Now, this is a conversation about just the way we interact with time on a regular basis in our world today. We think of things in time in the past, the present, and the future. We remember the past, we learn from the past, and we, we look forward to the future, but those are relatively new concepts for the human species. This stone hand axe was made about 200,000 years ago. Archaeologists will tell you that it's indistinguishable from hand axes made 100,000 years before and 100,000 years after that. Think about that. 200,000 years where we lived in the present. It was 13,000 generations passed before someone figured out to combine rock with leather and stick and literally invented the future. 13,000 generations. It's a long time to live in the past. Now, <laughs> speaking of generations, we have generations about every 25 years. Actually, biologically speaking, let's say that that first act of attempting to make a new generation comes at about 20 years of age. Think how much time you spend doing something other than that act in those 20 years. It's about six sigma of that time doing something else. Now, compare that to our friend, the fruit fly. The fruit fly will spend um, after they're ready to go in about eight and a half days. When you factor in the amount of time they spend coupling, they spend about 5,000 times as much time as we do in the act. 5,000 times. Forget lasting four hours. If I did it like a fruit fly when I was 20, it would have lasted 18 days. <laughs> so we're pretty good at actually telling time as a species. We've gotten used to these things that glow in our skies at night, obviously, and, they, and the daytime as well. They help us figure out things like days and months and years. But how good are we at telling time when we don't have that external stimuli around us? Well, this guy, Michel Siffre, I don't speak French very well, so let's just call him Mike. In 1962, Mike spent two months in a cave by himself to find out if he could still perceive the passing of time without that external stimuli. Now, while he was down there, he had a light, he could control that, and he kept a daily diary. I say daily because when they pulled him out 61 days later, he had 36 entries in his diary. He lost 25 days. Now, his body kept to a 24 to 26 hour clock, but his brain, his perception was completely lost without those external stimuli. Time marches on, we just need help figuring out at what speed that actually happens. So we measure time, right? Our bodies keep going, but our brains need some help from the outside world. We're pattern-seeking creatures. We tend to think, though, that everybody else is on that same pattern as we are, and that's not exactly true. Take local time, for example. It used to be that every clock had an own master clock, and everybody was on that same time. Great if you're in Brownsville, not so good if you're in St. Paul waiting for a telegraph due at 9 o'clock from Brownsville. It would arrive up to an hour and a half late. So in 1918, we got the Standard Time Act. That's what gave us daylight savings time. It wasn't Benjamin Franklin. Sorry to disappoint you. Uh, that's what gave us six different time zones. We've got that now. We deal with that. Uh, none for Hawaii, none for us, and we lost Indiana in 2006, by the way. Okay, quick experiment. Do this. How many fingers do you count on both hands? Shout it out. Ten, right? We're a base ten creature. We do things in ten. We count to ten. Ten is what rules us, right? Then why in the hell do we do this? <laughs> Where does twelve come from? I mean, one, two, three, four, six, eight, nine. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> We're base 10. Time is weird. Why do we track it that way? There's got to be a better way. Let's try this. Remember swatch time? Who's old enough to remember swatch time? Isn't that sad? A crazy bunch of crazy plastic Swiss watchmakers decided this is a much better way to take care of time. Obviously, it didn't work out too terribly well for them either. Speaking about a time, I am. So if you search on Google, you can find me, or you might find the new... Uh, HTC Evo phone uh, by Sprint. If you guys could help Evo get an Evo, that would be really, really awesome. Thanks. Enjoy our mission.